Hey folks, this is Kalani. The Dragonflight Alpha could be right on our doorstep. So close, in fact, that the build has already been pushed and discovered. All we're waiting for are the keys to unlock the door. There are also some very significant changes to how leveling is going to work in Dragonflight, especially regarding the future of Shadowlands when it becomes old content. So let's talk about it. Before we jump in, be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. The first thing I want to talk about is when the Alpha testing is going to start, because it could be a lot earlier than we originally thought. In a recent interview, Ian said they don't have an exact timetable for testing right now, but that we would get more information soon. They don't want to make any commitments that they might not be able to meet, but this expansion is quite far along. It's a lot of work that's been going into it over the last couple of years, and they can't wait to welcome people into the test servers and start getting feedback. So we get the good old soon message, but he did also mention that this expansion is quite far along. That honestly doesn't surprise me. Between the shift of resources from Shadowlands into the new expansion, the Shadowlands expansion seemingly being cut short, and a looming 2023 release date for Dragonflight, I'm not surprised in the slightest that they have shifted gears into making sure Dragonflight gets as much attention as necessary. Interestingly, Ian also emphasized that Blizzard is taking a ready when it's ready mindset for Dragonflight, something that we haven't seen in a long time from Blizzard. This used to be a staple of Blizzard games. The meme of soon TM came about because Blizzard didn't release games until they were ready. They would almost always be in a constant state of coming soon because Blizzard wanted to release a good product, a polished product, a true Blizzard product. We haven't seen that in a while, so maybe the release date for Dragonflight is sometime in 2023. I think that's fine if we get a good expansion. I am more than happy to wait for it. Another observation that we made during the announcement was that we had quite a lot to actually look at. Usually we don't see examples of every new feature or system with a little deep dive into every option on show. It's more outlined, more baseline goals and objectives. But for Dragonflight we got examples of almost everything, with a lot of in-game footage to go along with it. Heck, dragon riding looks like it might already be ready to go. That's pretty exciting and leads me to believe that we will probably see the first Alpha Wave invites go out relatively soon. We do have another big piece of information related to the timeline for Alpha though, the WoW dev server recently received a new build, the very first 10.0 build which is currently encrypted. That means no data mining can begin just yet, but an encrypted build is nothing new. Throughout the entirety of Alpha and Beta for Shadowlands, an encrypted build would always be pushed just before the actual testing servers were updated, and it's also very typical for the first build of a testing cycle, but what I'm more interested in here is what this could mean for a timeline. For example, the first encrypted Alpha Shadowlands build was pushed on February 19th, 2020. Gosh, that feels like so long ago at this point. The Alpha then started on April 9th, 2020, so there's about six weeks of waiting between the first build going up and the servers actually opening. For Battle for Azeroth, we see a similar timeline. The first build was pushed on December 16th, 2017, and the Alpha started around about January 26th, 2018, so about six weeks once again. That means Dragonfly Alpha could start up in just six weeks' time, but if the development has been going smoothly and they're as far along as Ian thinks they are, we could see it start even sooner than that. So, six weeks or less before we get to see just how cool all of these Dragonfly features look in-game. We'll get to test drive the dragon riding, see just how deep the Drakthir customization can go, and how the talent trees are shaping up. It's going to be a lot of fun. Moving on, one very interesting aspect of the Shadowlands expansion that had a few leftover questions was Chromie time. For Shadowlands, the entire leveling experience was turned on its head. Suddenly we're going from level 1 up to a max of 60, and every expansion can be played to level up from 10 to 50, and from there you would hop into the Shadowlands with everyone else and complete your journey to 60. But the big question always was, what happens when the level cap is increased again? What happens after Shadowlands? Well, we actually already have an answer for that. The current plan is for Shadowlands to be added into the Chromie Time expansion pool and for every expansion to be tuned and scaled to go from level 10 all the way up to level 60. So you won't have to do one expansion from 10 to 50 and then do Shadowlands from 50 to 60 and then finally get to go to the Dragon Isles. You can just do any expansion from 10 to 60 or any combination of expansions I guess and then hop on over to the Dragon Isles to join everyone else. This has some huge implications for leveling in general. 
First off, you do not have to go through the Shadowlands at all ever again. If you really didn't care for the leveling, or the zones, or the story, or any part of the expansion, if you'd rather just never see Ouroboros again, that's a choice you can make. The other major factor here is that you aren't forced to go through two expansions worth of content, which will probably mean much faster leveling to 60 when compared to right now. That's going to be a good thing, you don't want to slow people down too much from reaching the newest expansion because that's where the focus is going to be and that's where all the players are going to be. Before the leveling overhaul that was a massive issue, having to go through expansion after expansion after expansion on every single character, many times not even being able to finish any good parts of the story or before you could get into the actual relevant expansion where everyone else was. That was a huge barrier to entry for any newer players and I'm glad the dev team is making sure they don't recreate those same barriers over again. So with the scaling and tuning changes it could take just as long to get to 60 in Dragonfly as it does to get to 50 right now. It might take a bit longer, it doesn't really matter that much in the grand scheme of things, but the important part is that you can pick and choose how you level and the dev team is committed to creating a leveling experience that doesn't get bloated and outdated. Having Shadowlands be an optional experience is also a great decision in my opinion. Now where this gets very interesting in my opinion and a little bit funny is that the new player experience will not be changing. If you aren't too sure how this works, if a brand new player comes into World of Warcraft, or if you just create an entirely new account, your first character does not get the choice of which expansion to level through. You go to Exile's Reach first, work your way through that, and then you get pushed into the Battle for Azeroth storyline. That made a lot of sense at the start of Shadowlands, because Battle for Azeroth was the most recent expansion, and therefore the most relevant experience to get caught up with the story events. So moving forward, you would kind of assume that the newest expansion would then become the default default new player experience, right? It being the most relevant and the one that we just went through. But that's not going to be the case. The new player experience will remain as Battle for Azeroth. So newer players will completely skip over Shadowlands unless they decide to go back and do it. I wonder if that's just for simplicity so they don't have to change much, or if the dev team just don't want to push newer players through the potentially quite confusing storyline of Shadowlands, especially when you're not going to see any resolutions before moving on to Dragonflight. Whatever the reason may be, Shadowlands has kind of been cut out of any required leveling path, which makes me wonder if the dev team wants to try and leave that expansion, and maybe it's storyline behind as we move toward a more grounded story experience. Now another important question for Dragonflight leveling specifically would be whether or not Threads of Fate will also be available for the new 60 to 70 leveling experience on alts, and we now have confirmation that it will. The complete alternate game plus experience that Threads of Fate provided will be a feature brought forward and updated for Dragonflight, so expect to unlock various endgame systems immediately and be able to level up through dungeons, optional quests, and bonus objectives. I hope they expand this feature even further, giving you more options for leveling alts, hopefully in a relatively relatively quick manner to make it more interesting and less restrictive for playing multiple characters. In the same vein, we also know that the dev team want to expand what kinds of features have account-wide progress. In an interview, they said Blizzard is looking to make more systems account-wide unlocks moving forward. So hopefully that means everything that is account-wide right now will continue to be, and that could expand into other options as well. There is also a difference between account-wide unlocks and account-wide catch-ups. A lot of patch 9.2 has account-wide catch-ups. If you look at the Cypher system, for example, once you've unlocked a node for one character, all other characters characters have a much shorter research time. I would actually prefer if they went all the way account wide with things like this and just had one unlock for your account and then you're done. If you unlock it on your main you have it on your alts as well. So we'll have to see what becomes account wide and what becomes more of a catch up mechanic but it's good to see the devs embracing alt gameplay a bit more. Honestly alts are such a huge missed opportunity in WoW right now with so many barriers for entry but it looks like Dragonflight will be changing that considerably. We won't have as many systems, especially borrowed power systems for multiple characters to progress through, but if they really are going more account wide, that should help a lot as well. Personally, I would actually love for almost anything that can be account wide to be account wide. I know reputations are one of the big asks from recent years, and I totally agree with that. 
I feel like character specific progression is kind of outdated outside of power adjusting systems like gearing up. I would love to see reputation, story progression, all collectibles, even currencies, all of that should be account wide in my opinion. It would streamline the experience, it would make alts incredibly fun and efficient to play around with, and it's just better overall for the game. I know they've talked about removing restrictions and friction in systems like talents, letting you swap on the fly and save presets, and generally just giving you the tools to have fun and trying not to get in your way too much. That's great. We need more of that. Alts and alt gameplay could be a massive factor for that kind of treatment, and it all comes down to account-wide progress. I'm really excited to see how much will change going forward. But those are the leveling changes that we know of so far in the Dragonflight expansion, and if we're right about the alpha timing, we won't have to wait too much longer to see how this actually looks and plays in-game. What do you think of Shadowlands being optional going forward? When do you think the alpha testing will begin from the information we have, and how much of progress in the game do you think should be account-wide? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, and to everyone who subscribed on Twitch. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.